Okay, so we've seen that in order to fly in steady level flight, there's a certain amount of thrust and power that are required. We've also seen that in order to climb, we have to have more power available than that which is required for steady level flight. And that available power comes from the power plant. So the question then is what happens, what happens if we have no power available or if we have power failure? So let's consider our aircraft flying in climbing flight, which I'll draw real quickly here. This is the horizontal. So in climbing flight, our velocity is, in, is uh, oriented at an angle gamma, the climb angle from the horizontal. And we have our, our forces. Now, I'm going to draw this without any thrust because we're assuming there's power failure. So our lift is aligned perpendicular to the velocity. Drag is parallel, of course, so drag, lift, and then weight is straight down. Okay, so we've, we've talked before about the climb angle, which is just the component of the velocity. So if this is our velocity, then we have a, excuse me, this is our velocity. We have a horizontal component, and we have a vertical component, which we call VC. And this angle, of course, is gamma. And we've seen that VC, the climb angle, is simply, or excuse me, the climb rate, is simply the power available minus the power required divided by the weight. Now, if we have no power available, so we cut that out because we have power failure, then the climb rate becomes negative PR over W. Okay, so the first thing to note here is that we now have a negative climb rate. So uh, what we do is we generally call a negative climb rate a sink rate. So Vs equals the sink rate, and that's just negative Vc. It's the rate at which the aircraft is sinking. Okay, so to draw a quick diagram, uh, let's draw our aircraft again. Still at a positive angle of attack, it could be. We have no power, but now, if this is the horizontal, our velocity is going to be pointing down. Okay, Again, the angles are exaggerated here. This aircraft would likely be stalling. but uh, So here's gamma. Here's our velocity. And so now our lift is pointed somewhat forward, and our drag is pointing back. Okay, so if in this case we have a component VH, so this is our velocity, this, this is VH, and then we have a, a component pointing down and we call this VS, okay? Okay, so if VS is negative VC, then we can rewrite VS as PR over W. Okay, we actually know what PR is. We've talked about this before. So I'm not going to go into the details here, but the power required we derived earlier, and that is CD naught rho V squared, V cubed, excuse me, divided by 2 times the wing loading, W over SW, plus CD naught L V plus 2 times the wing loading, divided by pi e r a rho v all times w. So the sink rate is just the power required divided by w, so it's just this term in parentheses, or in other words, sink rate is c d naught rho v cubed divided by 2 times the wing loading plus C D naught L times V plus two times the wing loading divided by pi E R A rho V. And there you have it. That is another way of writing the sink rate. So notice that the sink rate is a function of velocity, but it's not 
it's not a very simple function of velocity. It's a function that has a v cubed term and that has a v term. And it also has a 1 over v term. So what this tells us is that we could look at minimizing the sink rate by flying at a certain airspeed. So let's see what that looks like. So here we're going to minimize the sink rate with respect to the velocity. Okay, so what this really boils down to um, is, you know, say we're flying in an aircraft and we lose power to one of the engines and we're right over an airfield. Okay, so we've lost power, we're, we are close to an airfield, but we want to stay in the air for as long as possible. We don't want to, we don't want to sink, okay? Because we want to give as much time as possible to like emergency crews on the ground, things like that. So, this, so we want to know what is the airspeed at which we can minimize the sink rate. So to look at this, first we realize, we go back, sink rate is the power required over the weight. Now the power required is a function of velocity, but the weight is not. So we, can, we could either go through the normal process that we normally do where we you know, take the derivative of the sink rate with respect to the velocity, set it equal to zero, and, and do everything, but we've already done that. Okay, so we know, we already know what the minimum power airspeed is, the airspeed at which power is, power required is minimized, so why don't we just use that? Because it's the same thing. So we recognize that the, the minimum sink rate airspeed is the minimum power airspeed, and in its most general form uh, that we derived, the minimum power airspeed is, I'm going to try and write this, this is kind of a hairy equation, but 2 divided by the square root of pi e r a c d naught l plus root pi e r a c d naught l squared plus 12 pi e r a c d naught all times w over s w over rho and there we have it this is our minimum sink rate airspeed Now the minimum sink rate that's possible can be found by plugging this equation back in to our equation for the sink rate. Okay, And I'll spare you the, the details of that because we've already done it. Okay, So we plug the airspeed back in, but remember that the sink rate is equal to the power required over the weight, where the power required is a function of velocity, the weight is not. So the what this means then is that Vs min is equal to Pr min divided by the weight. And we know what the minimum power required is. The minimum power required is, um, it's approximately 4 root 2 times Cd naught to the 1 fourth divided by 3 pi e r a to the 3 fourths times w times w over s w divided by rho. Square root w over s w divided by rho. So using this, uh, this equation with p r min over w as our definition for the sink rate, the minimum sink rate, we can find that v s min equals approximately 4 root 2 3 pi e r a to the 3 fourths. Sorry, I forgot. On top here we also have cd naught to the 1 fourth times root w over s w divided by rho. And so there we have our minimum sink rate.
okay? Now, something I wanted to remind you about, this is only an approximation. And this approximation was made by assuming that CD naught L is approximately zero. Now that's, a, that's an okay approximation for most aircraft, but it is nevertheless an approximation. So remember this, okay? All right, now, like I said, in the scenario I put forward to you before, minimizing the sink rate, what that does is it keeps us in the air for the maximum amount of time possible, okay? And when we do that, what we're doing is we're trying to maximize endurance, okay? So the sink rate is related to endurance. But endurance is not always what we want, okay? So it's not always in our best interest to stay in the air as long as possible. Instead, sometimes what we want to do is get as far as possible before we reach the ground. And in that case, what we're talking about is range. Okay, so you can imagine our same scenario, say we're flying, we lose power, but now we're not by an airfield, and, but there's an airfield that we know is some distance away. And so we want to get there as fast as possible, or we, we want to make sure that we get there, I guess. And then once we're there, we can then maximize endurance. And there's, there's a different airspeed at which range is maximized. So I just want to be clear, the sink rate is related to endurance.